What's up, y'all? This is your girl, Namia Carnice, with another edition of She's Namia's High Heel and Lipstick Conversation, where we have topics for the mature woman, the grown woman, the seasoned woman from every walk of life. We aim to uplift, empower, educate, and encourage the woman within mind, body, and spirit. So let's get to it, y'all. It's High Heels and Lipstick Conversation with your girl, Namia. Y'all come on and tap in. Hey, 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 smooches. What is up? It is your girl. She is Namia. Come on in here and check in um, with me on tonight. Tonight is going to be a very good conversation on tonight. And I want to get your thoughts. I want you to check in. If you are checking in, Um, Let me know you are here in the comments, Um, and we're going to get started with our topic really, really shortly. I'm going to give some time for some folks to um, check in with me. Um, If you are in the comments, if you are checking in, for my ladies, I want you to either in the comments, share with me some kissy lips, some lipsticks, let me know that you are checking in, some smooches. Um, from my brothers, because I know that there was a lot of brothers that was interested in this topic. If you are checking in, then you don't have to put no lipsticks or no smooches or anything like that, but at least give me a fist. Let me know that you are checking in, and we're going to have a good conversation on tonight, y'all. We are um, talking about the art of femininity for Black women, the art of femininity for Black women. Um, And we're going to get to that in just a minute. But if this is your first time checking in with me, um, share the live, share with your friends. Um, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, Just trying to grow my audience, build my brand a little bit. So um, if you like what I'm saying tonight, please, by all means, share this broadcast, share the replay, whatever. Um, talk to your friends, let them know um, about She is Namia and the platform and what we're doing and some of the great conversations that we are having. Um, If this is your very first time checking in with Namia, me, She is Namia, I'm just going to tell you what high heels and lipstick conversations are all about, what it's all about. Um, Simply put, this is grown as women conversation. Um, I had the pleasure of networking with some business folks over the weekend, and people are asking me, what is the brand? What is high heels and lipstick? Well, when you think of high heels, you think of lipstick, you think of women, grown women, okay? So this is not conversations for the ladies that are hung up and and follow the Instagram models or even the men who fawn over the Instagram models. Nothing wrong with that, but if... If, if that's your world, if, if that's, um, you know, your age group, we're probably not going to have conversations that are going to be um, interesting to you, okay? This is grown folks conversation, grown women conversation. Um, we're always going to keep it sexy. We're going to keep it classy because that's what we do at She Is Namia. We're going to keep it bossy when it needs to be bossy because ain't nothing wrong with being bossy or being a boss. But we're always going to keep it ladylike. Um, But these are conversations that's going to change you, that's going to challenge you. And hopefully my hopes um, is that it empowers you. So high heels and lipstick conversation. We're all about exploring topics that are relevant to us as women. Might I say that they are topics that are probably important, of interest um, to a more mature woman, a more seasoned woman. Um, You know, that's High Heels and Lipstick Conversation. So um, I'm glad that you could join us on this evening. Again, if you are checking in, go ahead and let me know in the comments that you are here. Just say, hey, Namia, or something. 
um, give me some kissy lips, some smooches, and let me know you're here all tonight. I want you to engage in tonight's conversation because I want to get your thoughts on um, what we're talking about tonight. So um, I am working a couple different streams where I went live. So I'm going to try and capture conversation, capture your comments as much as I can, as best as I can. Um, so I will share in the chat your thoughts. Um, talk back to me. Let me know. I don't have any special guests tonight. It's just me. I, you know, I might feel compelled to bring somebody in on the stage to indulge in the conversation. Um, but pretty much it's just me and you, us on tonight, talking about the art of femininity for Black women. And I'm going to um, give some context around that really, really soon. Um, and you know, let you know why we're talking about this conversation on today. Hey, Sora Cheryl Bennett, I see you checking in. My girl, my Gigi, um, Miss Mina, I see you checking in too to High Heels and Lipstick Conversation. Thank you for checking in with me on this evening. Um, and we're going to get into the topic real soon. Um, before we do that, I just want to, I, I will be remiss. Um, I am one that um, I keep up on current social events, um, things that are happening that impact us as a people. Um, I've said this before and I'm going to say it. I'm unapologetically Black. Um, I love us as a people. I love our culture. Um, I love everything about us um, as a people. And so um, quite naturally, I'm always in tune to things that impact us the the most. And so I want to express condolences on um, this evening for those who were impacted and even those who lost their lives um, in the mass shootings this past weekend. So if you have been not been paying attention, you must be under a rock or you're not in tune to current events. And I'm not here to tell you that's a good thing or a bad thing, but um, we had 10 people lose their lives in Buffalo, New York this past weekend. 10 African-American people that lost their lives. This was a racially motivated crime. 10 people lost their lives. And so um, I've been, you know, listening and watching some witnesses and things of that nature. We saw that they did apprehend um, the suspect. Quite naturally, he was apprehended and um, he didn't lose his life when he was apprehended. He probably had some Burger King when he got to <laughs> the station. Um, but nevertheless, um, it was racially motivated. So that just lets us know, listen, it, it, it's real out here. Um, people are um, feeding into division and they're feeding into hate. And so we got to be conscious. We got to be careful. These people that lost their lives, they was just at the grocery store. Most of them were older. I don't think there was anybody that lost their lives in this, this mass shooting that was under the age of 50. Um, and they were just out grocery, grocery shopping, doing what they do, doing what we all do day to day. And a young man, young white Caucasian male comes in um, and because he felt hate in his heart, he killed 10 people, 10 of us, 10 African-Americans, Buffalo, New York. Um, we also had some a life loss in um, California and there was multiple injur injuries. So another mass shooting, um, one person dead. Most of them were, the victims were all of Asian descent. And so they were attending church at the time, lost their life. It's crazy out here now. I don't know what else to tell you. Listen, I, I'm a pink card carrier. And if you yourself hold a pink card, you know what that means when I say uh, pink card carrier. I advise folks, learn to protect yourself. Ladies, single ladies, learn to protect yourself. Okay. Um, be aware of your surroundings. If somebody don't look right, their vibe ain't right, trust your gut. Um, but I am not above us as ladies um, learning to protect ourselves at all costs um, and carrying what we got to carry to 
protect ourselves safely. You know, you need to posse up with your girls and, and go to the gun range. Do that. Do that. But um, I just want to express my condolences. Um, what else we got before we get into our topic? Uh, so I'm a big hip hop music lover. I love hip hop. Um, anybody that knows me knows me personally. I'm big on 90s hip hop um, in particular. And so um, this past week, Friday, Kendrick Lamar dropped his album. I love me some Kendrick Lamar. It's been five years since he dropped an album. He dropped Damn in 2017. And this year on Friday, he dropped um, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Um, and so I'm still trying to digest what I feel about his album, how I feel about his album. What do y'all think? Anybody, anybody into Kendrick Lamar, listen to his album? Let me know what you think, what you thought of his album. I'm still trying to digest it. What I will say is he was very revealing. Um, the brother has been going through some things, um, some mental health issues. He is very open and very vulnerable in his music this time around. I love that. I love openness. I love vulnerability. Um, but I think it's a shining example of how Black men go through stuff and we got to be conscious and we got to be aware that even Black men have mental health issues. Um, you know, Kanye is a, a shining example of that. Um, but sometimes they're, they're not, all, not always ex expressive as Kanye, maybe not always expressive as or have an out like, like the Kendrick Lamars to be able to devote themselves um, in their music. And so, you know, we have to know that they, too, are often plagued with mental health issues. So I don't know. What do y'all think of his album? Um, I'm still I'm still digesting it. But, you know, it is what it is. So Kendrick Lamar, Mr. Rap, Morale, and The Big Steppers. There is another thing I want to talk before we get into our, our topic. So um, the last time we went live, I talked a little bit about Kevin Samuels and the whole, uh, it was right after his death. I think he had, had only um, been in the grave 24 hours and, and some of the things that I observed and the conversations that I heard, um, those kind of those conversations are still happening. Listen, this man, even in his death, is still sparking a lot. Two weeks later, we're about two weeks later, right? Still sparking conversation. Still got Black men, got Black women um, going in, going in on each other, um, expressing their views um, and, you know, I have my thoughts on Kevin Samuels. Y'all know I wasn't a Kevin Samuels fan in that way, but I would not be one to celebrate his death. I don't do that. To me, that's just um, inhumane to celebrate a man's death, no matter whether we agreed with his opinion or not, or to be happy about his death. I look at Kevin Samuels as entertainment. He was a shock jock like a Wendy Williams. Um, so, you know, I don't necessarily celebrate the man's death. He had his opinion. He had his followers. And that's all I think about him, you know, in that regard. Um, but he's still the topic of heavy conversation. Like we've had Vivica Fox to speak out and say that his death was karma for the energy that he put out there, the, 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 what he put out there um, and how he demeaned women. So She's getting a lot of backlash for that. Um, who else is getting backlash? D.L. Hughley. Hughley. D.L. Hughley, the comedian, um, radio show host. So I saw a video that's circulating that he's getting a lot of backlash for his views on Kevin Samuels and um, talking about how it's, you know, his death was pretty shameful. And we didn't know anything about this man other than the nice looking pictures that we um, saw put up of him, the model pictures and always looking good and poised. Um, and he presented himself in a certain way on social media and he went viral and he found his niche in criticizing black women. And, and that's what got him to his status. Um, but D.L. Hughley's, Hughley's uh, um, 
you know, opinion is that he died a, a sad death by himself or with some woman that he had only known for 24 hours. And so he's getting a lot of backlash. Right? On the flip side of that, you got a lot of uh, his supporters that are speaking out. Um, T.I., I think, is get, getting ready to do a tribute to him. Um, you know, he has a lot of celebrity supporters, people that are, are really speaking well of him. So, you know, again, I don't agree with celebrating anybody's death, but, you know, he lived his life, he made his mark, and that is what it is. I'll be glad when the conversation dies down to the point that it's no longer... Um, making us divided as black women and women. And hopefully we can, you know, talk a little bit about that on this evening. Okay. So that's that. So that's Kendrick Lamar. That's my condolences. That's Kevin Samuels. I do want to ask a question. Um, weekly, what I've been doing on She Is Namiya is just posting these topics of the day. And so um, I I want to post a topic and um, you can share your thoughts um, or just consider and ponder on um, the topic of this week. And that is, did you invest in yourself over the last week? And if you did, how so? How did you invest in yourself? Do you make a habit of investing in yourself one way or another? And what I mean by that is, do you, did you take the time out this week to accomplish a goal or move towards accomplishing a goal? Those goals that you have set on the back burner. And that could be anything. That could be from losing 30 pounds to, you know, taking a college course going back and getting your education, anything, you know, starting that business. What did you do this week over the past week to invest in yourself emotionally, mentally, financially, your health? What did you do to invest in yourself? You got to ask your question yourself that sometimes. Did I invest in myself? Am I living a life where um, my investment is showing forth fruit? Do I create these goals and then just put them on the back burner and never do the take the necessary steps to accomplish them? So what did you invest in yourself on this week? Okay. I see a few folks checking in. Hey, Gigi. Hey, Mickey. Thanks for checking in. Hey, Matt. Thank you for checking in. I see um, some classmates checking in. Let me know that you are with me. Put some kissy lips in the chat or um, for my brothers, you can put a fist up in there. You don't have to put no kissy lips, but let me know you are here. As much as I can, as much as I'm streaming live, so I'll say this, I'm going to share comments and thoughts on this evening because this is a topic that I think is going to, you know, invoke a lot of um, reaction and so as much as I can, I want to share your thoughts, um, share your comments. So if I can um, put them, post them and make them seen, just like my girl Michelle is checking in with her kissy faces, then I want to share your comments. I want to share your thoughts on this evening. Um, if I can't post them and, and show them, I'm definitely going to um, try to read some of the comments, some of the reactions that I am getting on um, tonight from tonight's topic. Okay. So with that said, we're going to just go ahead and, and jump into um, this topic, the art of femininity for Black women. I want to start the conversation with asking a question. This is for men. This is for women. I see people checking in on the She Is Mia page. I see folks on my personal Facebook page. So share for me. How do you define femininity? And I asked this question earlier. And how important is it, do you think, to your relationships? Um, and that could be any relationships. That could be your friendships, your work, you know, relationships. But in context of tonight, we are talking about your romantic relationships, your marriages, uh, your boo thing. Um, how important do you 
feel that femininity, the art of femininity and walking in your feminine, feminine energy is important to healthy relationships. Okay. And I want to put some context around this because I'm, I'm reading a book. I'm going to share in tonight on some different concepts from this book. And it's called um, The Black Girl's Guide. Yeah, see that? The Black Girl's Guide to Being Blissfully Feminine. And the author is um, Candace Adwele. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing her um, last name right. For purposes of this discussion, I'm just going to call her Candace. I, I apologize if I messed her last name up, but Candace, and she has written this book. It's a black woman. She has written this book called The Black Girl's Guide to Being Blissfully Feminine. Okay. Let me tell you a little bit about the author before we go into, because listen, I, I want y'all to know before we start this conversation, ladies, you are not going to agree with everything that I share on tonight, okay? Um, it is going to sound to you, some of, some of what I'm gonna share with you ladies is probably gonna sound 1950s, 1960s, archaic, and that's okay. I'm not asking you to agree with everything that I share um, or some of the con concepts that I share, and that's okay, you know? One size doesn't fit all. You have to do what works best for you in your relationship. I'm not trying to tell you how to get a man, how to keep a man, none of that, okay? Um, but I am going to share some concepts. I will tell you what I agree with Candace about in this book and some things that I probably don't necessarily agree, just from my personal perspective. Now, you may agree with everything that Candace says. Um, and that is okay. Or you may not agree with anything that Candace says, and that's okay too. Okay. Um, but I'm just asking you to have a open mind on tonight. Okay. As we discuss this topic. So about the author, I'm going to read a little bit about the author. So you understand, um, where she's coming from, but Candace is a femininity educator, okay, the author. She's a certified life coach. She's a beauty professional. Um, she's residing in Florida. She has studied femininity and masculinity for over 10 years, okay? It has become a passion of hers to help women to tap into the power of their feminine essence, to attract deeper, more intimate relationships with men to foster genuine sisterhood with other women. We need that. We need to know how to, you know, play nice with other ladies. Sometimes oh, that's that's a topic for another conversation. Okay. And just to have overall confidence as a woman, Candace absolutely loves teaching women to enjoy being feminine. She is a traditional woman with traditional family values, and her overall goal in life is to add value to the lives of others and make them feel beautiful. So that is a little bit about Candace, the author. She's the certified life coach. She's the relationship person. I'm not it. I'm just here to tell you about the book. And if she becomes a best-selling author, then she's going to have me to thank um, but I think it's um, it's a good read. It's a um, easy read. It's an interesting read if you are open to. But again, it is called the Black Girl's Guide to Being Blissfully Feminine. Okay, so I'm just going to share some stuff, and I want your reaction. I want to hear. I, I, let, let's talk about it. Do you agree? Do you not agree? Before we before I share some con this share some concepts from the book. She has over 42. We won't have time to get to all of those concepts on tonight. Okay. We can only touch on about eight. I have eight that I picked out that were um I either agreed or didn't agree with. But if you get the book, it's on Amazon. She has over 42 concepts that she talks about. I'll probably mention a few, but you know, for the most part, I'm only going to stick to um, a few of the concepts, but what led me to this book, 
um, just so that you have some framing around it, is a study that I read um, not too long ago. Um, and this study, and I'm going to drop drop the the link to the study uh, and drop the the title of the study in the comments, and you can um, search for the study, read it on your own if that is what piques your interest. But um, the name of the study is uh, Circumstances Beyond Their Control, Black Women's Perception of Black Manhood. And give me a second, I'm just going to drop that in drop that in the link so individuals who drop that in the comments so individuals who are interested you can either follow along um or you know tell me what you think about it as we're we're using this as the backdrop for tonight's conversation but circumstances beyond their control black women's perception of black manhood. And so in this study, it, it was a study, um, and, and, and there's some interesting excerpts from the study, and I don't want to misrepresent um, any of the excerpts. So I'm going to just um, drop a couple of the excerpts from this study, because this helps us to frame tonight's conversation. For tonight. But, oh, a little bit of that, that cut off, but uh, let me read. Um, it says, Black women and men in the United States share a complex and painful history of racial exclusion, discrimination, injustice, and economic hardship. Okay. These social historical factors have not only influenced the quality of life and socioeconomic standing, but also directly influenced development of racialized gendered perceptions of roles and roles of Black women and Black men. So what does that mean? What does that, what, what does that mean? Um, it means that we got some pain, some trauma, some stuff that we as Black men and Black women have been through. Okay, I'm not here to preach to you, but it really goes all the way back to um, slave days and even before we were brought over on the boat, okay? Um, and some of those social constructs have shaped how we view one another, how we engage and interact. Um, and I would be even willing to say that it has a lot to do with the reason why we are in 2022, what I have observed, the reason why we're so divisive, the reason why you have men um, real mad at a lot of black women, a lot of black men mad at black women right now. The reason why you have uh, personality, personalities like Kevin Samuels um, become so po popular, a polarizing figure. Um, because believe it or not, a lot of Black men agreed, and even some Black women. You know, I said this before when I talked about him a couple weeks ago. I didn't disagree with everything that Kevin Samuels said. I didn't like his delivery, but everything he said wasn't necessarily wrong. But what it has done is caused us as um, Black men and Black women to just not see eye to eye. And there's a lot of divisive conversations that are happening right now. So, you know, the study really talks about that, you know, we just have a very complex and painful history. And some of it is has been socialized. Um, black women have been reared and socialized to be strong. When we talk about the art of femininity tonight, a lot of times uh, you you hear the term um, to toxic femininity or a woman that is not walking in her femininity or she is masculine, she has masculine energy. Or sometimes that's perceived 
from black men based on, you know, just how they've even been socialized, how we've been socialized as black women. Okay. So that's one part of the study. Another excerpt from the study, and again, I dropped the link um, in the study. I dropped the link in the comments. So please go to the study in your spare time. Go ahead and, and read it if you can. Um, but it was it's a very interesting study. Um, they interviewed, um, you know, ladies um, about their perception about Black men. And this is some of the things that came out of the studies. Let's see. Let me get another one on here. See if that all shows up. Sometimes all these comments don't show up. Okay. I'll just read then. Some of, some of the comments are too long, but it says discussion of U.S. Black women's view of Black men, especially regarding marriage, have largely taken place within popular literature. Notwithstanding limited scientific research regarding Black gender ideologies of Black women exist, whereas popular ge literature generally describes the state of Black relationships as disheartened of poor quality, conflict written, written um, and empirical research has mostly devoted attention to low Black marriage rates. It's a reason why we're not getting married. We're conflict written. We're going at each other. We're not listening to one another. For some Black women, we've taken on the Black men ain't shit, and they're the enemy persona. For some Black men, they're just disheartened, disappointed in us as Black women. And so we're doing this. We're talking at each other, but we're not listening. And unfortunately for us as Black women, that means we're not getting married at the rate of some other ethnicities. something to think about, okay? Last thought on this study that I, sh I read. Um, of the minimal studies that highlight Black relationships and Black gender ideologies of Black women, most focused on gendered power. According to Cowrie and colleagues, because Black men experience a lack of respect in society, and low societal power, Black women attempt to buffer these negative experiences by accepting more traditional gender roles in the home. Look, it's some Black men that's probably checking in that's not going to agree with that, okay? Because they have fed in to the Meg Stallions, the Cardi B's who say, I don't cook, I don't clean, but I got the ring, okay? So, a lot of men out here thinking that these women, that, that women don't um, agree or that they don't um, feel that traditional values help a relationship, according to the study. Okay. Then it goes on to say, for example, a woman in the study stated that she allows her husband to exert more power in their relationship because no man no black man wants a wife, a woman who knows more than he does. Researchers have also found that some black women modify their straightforward personality types and minimize their successes to make men feel more confident and comfortable. Wow, that's telling. Listen, like I said, Tonight, you're not going to agree with everything, um, some of these concepts that I'm getting ready to, to share. Um, some of you are going to be, please. bitch, please. Bitch, please. Bitch, please. Bitch, please. And that's okay. I'm not asking you to agree. I'm not asking you to take it as the gospel. I'm just asking you to have an open mind. So we can have some open dialogue. So ultimately, we can think about things and maybe we can be on a path to better relationships with our men. Okay. 
So again, if you are checking in, I want to see that you are checking in. I want to know that you are here. I want to hear your thoughts on some of the conversation, some of the concepts that we're talking about um, on this evening. I will definitely try to highlight your comment if I can get to it. Um, one thing about streaming live, you're not going to see every comment that comes through. Um, but if I can read or share your comment, I definitely want to hear um, your voice on tonight. Okay. So let's, let's get into it. Okay. So again, the Black Girl's Guide to Being Blissfully Feminine. She has 42 concepts that she talks about being feminine. Um, Candace comes from her own personal perspective. She shares her own testimony about how, uh, you know, she had to learn that um, as a Black woman, um, her, you know, the behaviors that she was displaying um, was not conducive to her marriage. Okay. Um, so this is the perspective that she's coming from. I'm just going to start off with saying that um, as far as me um, and how I operate and my marriage, a, a lot of what, um, how we conduct, how we carry out our family is very traditional. Okay. But, but that's me. You know, um, some women don't believe, they think if you fix a man's plate, that's 1950s, 1960. I'm of the belief that, you know, certain um, feminine energies, certain feminine prowess are necessary for men. They are a turn on for men and they are appreciated by men. Okay. So again, I'm going to share with you some concepts. Let me know if you agree or disagree. The very first concept from this book, and I want to make sure some of these, I, I got to make sure um, that I highlight a couple of these um, because I want you to read them for yourself um, and let me know whether you agree or disagree. But one of the things that she talks about um, in, in the book, the first one is feminine mystique. Feminine mystique, how to be feminine. Remember, she's talking all about how to be feminine. So she says, very little is sacred and very little is secret in today's society. A woman who has a bit of mystery is a rare breed. The woman who knows what to reveal and how much to reveal some of that was cut off is a rare jewel. Hmm. Feminine mystique, it's part of being feminine. So when I read that, um, again, that's something that I, <laughs> I agree with. I think I agree with Candace on that. Remember, she's a relationship expert. She's a relationship coach, a life coach. I'm just here expressing what I think. But um, she says that keep some stuff to yourself, ladies. Keep it to yourself. She goes on to talk about how, you know, sometimes as, as Black women in an effort to um, be cool, be the cool woman, be the down woman, with our men, we get to telling everything about our past. You know, we tell them how many sexual escapades that we had before we met them. We give them the number, how many men we've been with. Um, she talks about keeping your beauty routine to yourself, not getting dressed in front. I don't know if I believe that. Not getting dressed in front of your man. Um, when getting to know a man, divulge yourself a little bit at a time. That's what she says. This is Candace. This ain't me. What do you think? The part that I agree with is not telling a man everything about yourself, especially when it comes to your partners. Does it doesn't matter if it's two, only two in your lifetime or 20. Most men, that's one too many. One too many. Hey, thanks for checking in, Shahida. Thanks for checking in, Sora Trayvon. Thanks for checking in to my sister, June. Thank y'all for checking in. What do you think? Feminine mystique. 
Share what you think in the comments. Is it important for women in the art of femininity, Black women, to keep some feminine mystique about themselves? Do we divulge too much too soon of ourselves? According to Candace, we do. We overshare. And sometimes you got to keep some stuff to yourself. Okay? Feminine mystique. She also talks about, second concept, watch what you do with your mouth. Okay? Watch what you do with your mouth. Sister Sharon says, I think some mystery is a good thing. It's okay to be mysterious. We're going to talk about that second concept in a minute, but I want to share some comments. I agree with keeping some things to yourself. Sometimes we say and do the most. It's good to have a little feminine mystique. We talk too much. We say too much. We give too much of ourselves away very early in the beginning when we approach relationships. I'm not trying, I'm not saying that you have to be secretive and not share of yourself, but you have to be careful of what you say. Okay. So have some feminine mystique, ladies, as Karen, as Candace says. Then she says, watch what you do with your mouth. Now, before y'all start thinking all oh, nasty, um, this is a point that I happen to ag agree with. Um, and I'm going to share um, this with you. But it says, as women, we have so much power with our words and the sounds of our voices. Our words and voices are two of, two of the ways we can nurture those around us. Men use the tone and inflection of our voices to gauge whether we are pleased whether we can be pleased or whether they want to bother trying to please us at all. As women, we have the power to build or tear down with our words. Listen, if you are a Bible believer, like I'm a Bible believer, that you know that the Bible speaks specifically about that there is death. There's power and death in, in, in our tongue. We can bring life or we can kill somebody with our words. I ain't going to say, you know, I ain't going to put myself out there, but I just know for a fact that us as ladies, sometimes um, our tongue can be deadly. And so Sister Candace is telling us, watch what you do with your mouth. That as a woman, we are supposed to nurture with our words. It's so funny um, in having a conversation not too long ago with um, a, a friend of mine, um, one of the things that I shared is that um, it's so important for us to, as women to be um, peaceful, to bring a, a sense of calm, to bring a sense of peace, especially in our homes. You know, that's part of our job. That's part of our role. Um, and we can disrupt the peace in the home, or we can add to the peace in the home. So when your husband comes home, your boo comes home from a, a long day of work, do you immediately go in on them and disrupt the peace in the home and um, divulge about your bad day? Tell them all about what happened. Get on them about that honey-do list that you told them to do get to a week ago and he still ain't got to? Or do you bring a sense of peace and comfort um, to the home? And as women, we have the ability to do that. Okay, Watch what you do with your mouth. Some of y'all ain't going to like this, okay? Some ladies, you're not going to like. Now, I know brothers probably going to say, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of brothers that's going to agree. Um, but with some ladies, this is going to sound um, old school to them. 
but does it still work? Is there, um, is there something to be said about traditionalism and carrying out relationships in a traditional manner um, and tapping into that feminine energy and that fem feminine prowess? We're taught old school, you know, my grandma said, you, you catch you catch more bees with honey. You, you're more influential when you season your words with a little sugar. Now, yeah, that's hard for some, that, that's hard for me too. I, I'm just, I'm going to keep it real because when I have something to say, you're going to hear what I got to say. And it's probably going to come out in a way that you're not going to like it. However, I'm learning that um, it's important for me to watch what I do with my mouth. Okay. What do you think? Let me know what you think, ladies. Let me know what you think, brothers. Is it important? Shahida says, you have to tame the tongue. A kind word kills multitude of strife. Um, uh, my mister is checking in and he says a woman should have femininity. Okay. It's important. It's important to a uh, relationship. Okay. The book goes on to continue to say, Candace goes on to continue to say, uh, and I'm going to share this too, because I think this is, this is important. Um, that to maintain feminine energy, be cognizant of being too loud, that should say loud, obnoxious, harsh, overbearing, masculine, and rude. Our voices as women should be soothing, relaxing, nurturing, and add to the overall peace of the environment in which we find ourselves. Hmm. A woman should be not be too loud, too obnoxious, too harsh, overbearing, shouldn't be too masculine and rude. Shahida says, uh, I agree. We can't be hard all the time. We as women need to stop saying we are independent because we need a man on several levels, okay? Do I agree? I I agree um, in some aspects. Listen, I, I'm going to say this, and my, you know, my husband is, is watching, he's checking in, and he'll let you know, um, if you piss me off, I'm probably going to be any of those things that Candace, anything but any those things that Candace mentioned. Um, however, is that effective? Yes, ladies, we are bosses on our jobs. Okay, I, I'm a boss on my job. We are bosses in the business world. We own businesses. We um, were highly educated. Um, all these things work in our favor and they add to um, us having very dominant presence in the workplace, in the business. When we're out there making deals and securing the bag, works great out in the workplace, but does it work for us in relationships? Will it help you to be successful in a relationship? in a marriage. And Candace says, no. Okay. You got to watch what you do with your mouth. Okay. Next concept. Remember, I'm only sharing eight and I got three. I'm on number three. Okay. This next one I have talked about, if you have followed me, if you know anything about me, um, you know that I am going to agree with this next concept um, wholeheartedly. 
but it is all about taking off your cape. Okay? Taking off your cape. Candace says that Superwoman, that's who we've been for a far too long and often without a Superman to help us. Okay. Listen, I've done this on the podcast before on my podcast with her voice, um, with my co-host, Missy. Shout out to Missy, um, my cousin. You can also find us on social media, Her Voice Podcast featuring Nikki and Missy. And we talked about this very thing um, about this uh, superwoman syndrome that we as Black women proudly hold as a mantra. And listen, I'm not saying that we as um, Black women can't be strong. I'm not saying that we as Black women can't be capable of carrying the burden. We, we do that. You know, we, we take care of our families. We take care of our husbands, our spouses, our boo thing, wh whomever. We, we go out and we work um, and we wear our cape 24-7. But sometimes you got to learn to take the cape off, ladies. Um, it's just necessary. It's a part of our femininity. You don't got to be strong all the damn time. My sis T. Greenwell says, you have to know when to fall back and let that man lead. So true. Other ways that you can take your cape off, you got to cut off negative people. Avoid other people's problems. So this is big for me. If you so the new concept this day, this day and age is empath. Everybody's an empath. Okay, it's a, a super spiritual term, um, and it, it makes us sound all divine in nature because we call ourselves empaths. I don't necessarily use the term. Um, my term that I, the way that I put it is, I just take on everybody else's burden all the time. I'm a problem solver. I like to see people happy. I like to see people smile. I like to make people feel good. I'm an encourager by nature. That's how God made me. That's how he designed me. But one of the things that I'm learning is that I can't take on everybody's burden, everybody's problem. And as I've grown in my, you know, on my spiritual path, as I've, I've developed in my relationship with God, um, I've learned that you can't make everybody, you can help folks, but you can't make everybody's problem your problem. So you got to take off the cape sometimes. Um, you got to ask for help. Listen, that is a, a hard concept for us sometimes. We don't want to trouble nobody. We'll get it done ourselves. And then what happens when we keep that cape on too long, you know what happens, ladies? We develop resentment because we've had to do it by ourselves. I mean, there are so many, so many avenues we can touch on, I mean, with, with that topic alone. Um, taking off the cape. The black, strong black woman phenomenon is ruining us because we're so plagued with trying to do it all. And I'm preaching to the choir. My husband tell you all day long, I'm, I'm involved in everything. Uh, I'm very social, very active. Um, you know, if, if it's somebody's whatever, I'm going to try to support. I'm going to try to be there. Um, and there have been times that I've just wore myself thin. I even went into, um, you know, marriage, st still operating with an uh, independent single mindset in terms of just doing 50 million things at one time and being everywhere and being there for everybody and going to this event and, tr and trying to be there for that. 
And it's just not possible. We wear ourselves thin. I'm not going to even talk about what it does to ourselves physically. How being a superwoman at all times, what it does to us physically, and what it, what it does to our health. I'm not going to even get into that. I'm not going to preach to you about that one. But we got to take the cape off, ladies. Am I making sense to somebody? Y'all agree? No? Y'all looking at me? Y'all look, remember, these ain't my words. This is Candace. I'm just sharing what I agree and what I, and, and sharing my thoughts. But are you, you looking at me yet? Like, bitch, please. That's so 1950s. That's so 1940s. You know, we're working two jobs these days. We're carrying the load. We're single mothers. Um, you know, we have all, all, all of those, um, reasonings for being strong black women but sometimes we overexert ourselves and sometimes we got to take off the cape okay so she's candace says take off the cape um she says avoid doing as many <laughs> this one is <laughs> this one is funny taking off the cape part of taking off the cape she says avoid doing as many masculine tasks as possible that's taking off the garbage mowing the lawn fixing your car now this is where i had a problem with candace um not that it was wrong in what she's saying that in taking off her cape because i totally agree with that um, but she says, avoid doing as many masculine tasks as possible, taking out the garbage, mowing the lawn, fixing your, your car. Okay, so I'm going to keep it real. Since I've been married, I don't know that I've taken out the garbage once. <laughs> My husband will testify to that because we just actually talked about that the other day. He's like, you don't even touch the garbage anymore since we've been married. You're a spoiled wife, if that's what you want to call it. Um, and I didn't realize that I no longer did those kind of things that I always call on my husband, baby, can you screw in this light bulb? Can you do this? You know, my, my husband's a very manly man. So that's just part of his, his character, his nature, you know? Um, and I live in a house with two men. I, I have a son and my husband, they're the ones that take out the garbage, but I ain't touched the garbage since I got married. But when I thought about this particular comment. I thought about the single ladies. I thought about when I was single, I didn't have any choice but to take out the garbage and try to fix stuff around the house by myself. Cause it was just me. I was doing it all alone by myself. I was fortunate enough, I think as a single woman to have um, male friendships where I could call and say, hey bro, can you do X, Y, Z? Or I had to pay the guy to do my lawn, you know, do my yard and, and things like that. And so, um, yes, when I got married, it was such a relief to not have to do those things or have to be the one that made the decision about those things. But Candace says that that's part of taking up off your cape as a woman, that you need to relax in your feminine energy and Stuff like taking out the garage, mowing the lawn, popping in your your head like our, our masculine task. I really want to give her a bitch please on that. On some of that anyway. You know. Miss Ayana says, I don't take out garbage, cut grass, or fix the car. Thanks, bae, unless I want to. I'm with you. I'm with you, Sister Ayana. I don't have to do those things. <laughs> I love it. I look at the garbage. Listen, the garbage will pile up all damn day long in that corner, and I won't touch it until either my husband or my son decides to take it out. It's just because I don't have to do that anymore. However, when I was single, I was doing all of that. I was going to, I still go get my own oil change and stuff like that. You know, I don't burden my husband with some of those nuances, things, you know, I, I still have a little independence in me, but 
Um, there's just some things that I don't, I don't have to do anymore. And some of the ladies agree. Some of the ladies agree. Okay. Ms. Shahida says, we must make sure that man is in position to lead first and foremost. I agree, Shahida. There's an order to some things when it comes to relationships and it comes to marriage. Um, and again, if you are a Bible believing woman, the way that I am a Bible believing woman, you know that um, marriage only really works well when you do it the way that God designed marriage to work. And so that's, that is Christ first as the head of the husband and then your husband and then the wife and then the rest of the family, the children. And so there's an order order to things. So pretty much what Candace saying is not um, unbiblical, those of us who are Bible believers. Um, those of us who are not Bible believers, yeah, it's going to sound like archaic. It's going to sound archaic. But is there some truth to it? Does it work? This old school traditional value. Is that the reason why um, women, going back to the study, is that the reason why women, Black women in particular, are finding themselves not able to marry as soon, as quick as other races or ethnicity of women? Because we've taken on too much masculine energy. Listen, Back in the day, and I'm just going to say this, and I'm going to get get on to the next concept from Miss Candace. Um, before I myself learned to um, walk in feminine energy and walk in my femininity and embrace my femininity, when I would um, very early, young, um, in my dating, I guess twenties, you know, when I first really, really started dating. Um, I had to get used to, I had to have a man tell me, you don't ever, when you're with me, you don't ever touch the door. I've even had my husband at times in the beginning when we first started dating, slap my hand because I touched the door. I don't do that no more. I don't touch no doors no more. <laughs> But I think um, there's sometimes as women, we, we're so used to doing everything. We're, we're not used to being catered to. Um, again, like some, some of the ladies said in the, in the comment, we don't allow space for men to be men and to lead the way. And so um, even having a man open, opening our door is a foreign concept for us. Now, listen, on the flip side of that, before I got married and I was in dating, I've had some men who I had to teach them. I had to stand on the side when 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 I approached the door and it looked like they were going to allow me to open my own door. I had to step to the side and give him a look like, brother, are you going to open the door? One person in particular, I remember it was a topic of heavy debate because he was not used to doing that. That was just not something that he did. Of course, he wasn't the person for me because thank God I, I got my husband and, and he opens doors. But um, there's a segment of men out here who that's foreign to them. There's a segment of women out here who proudly bust through the door without even stopping and pausing and letting that man take the lead and allow you in the door. So Shahida says, when I was dating, if he pulled the door, I let him, I let him and I look for it. Yeah, it's an expectation. Ayana says, the routines we get used to do, do hinder us sometimes from receiving from a man. Yeah, we get into a routine. Um, we get into our independent streak. Um, and we have to unlearn some things. Listen, I had to unlearn a lot going into marriage because I have been independent and strong for so long. 
Um, and, you know, I had to unlearn a lot. This is water, y'all. Quite normally when you see me with the wine glass, there's usually wine in it, but I'm sipping water tonight. I'm detoxing, getting some toxins out of my body, trying to be about my health. So um, my she is Namia wine glass is full of water. All the ice is melted. But yeah, we have to unlearn some stuff. Okay. This next one is um, a good one from Candace. This next concept that she talks about um, being emotionally vulnerable. And I think someone in the comments um, has alluded to this, how important it is for us as women to be emotionally vulnerable. But it says being emotionally vulnerable is the absolute only way that you can have authentic connections with others and be authentically feminine. You must be emotionally avail available and vulnerable to maintain yin, yang, harmony of the relationship and keep your man connected. You got to be emotionally vulnerable. That's another, that's, that's another hard one. Um... Um, like I said, I'm not the relationship expert. I can only tell you what I agree with, what I don't agree with. Um, but I can tell you for me, being emotionally vulnerable was one of the things that I had to learn over time. Um, I've shared this story before. Um, when you are strong and you're independent, I've been taking care of myself ever since I was uh, 18. I, I bought my first house at the age of 30. Um, so obviously I developed the superwoman, the, the black, super strong black woman, um, you know, kind of attitude and behavior. Um, and getting into a relationship on my way to marriage it was the hardest thing for me initially in the beginning to be emotionally vulnerable with my husband. Now, thank God my husband who is who he is. Um, and, um, you know, we have a history with each other. So that helped me to tear down some walls. Um, but he was like the first one to tear down my walls and to get me into a place where it, I felt it was okay to be vulnerable, that emotionally I was safe. Listen, man, if you are out there, one thing that women need from you, for us to be emotionally vulnerable, you need to provide us a safe space. If we don't feel safe with you um, from an emotional standpoint, from a physical standpoint, from a mental standpoint, the likelihood of you getting us to the point where we feel emotionally vulnerable or allow ourselves to be vulnerable is probably going to be little to none. You're not going to get that from us. However, when you provide a safe space, it provides a foundation for us to be more vulnerable. Now, listen, I know we have um, developed um, all niggas ain't shit attitude. Um, we've been in relationships with men who have abused us and hurt us um, and made us develop an attitude where um, it's hard for us to trust. That's a whole conversation within itself, okay? Sometimes it's just because that's who we picked, what we picked. Um, and so we have to take some accountability and responsibility in the types of men that we allow in our lives. Um, but with the right man, being emotionally vulnerable um, is necessary to have a healthy and successful relationship or marriage. Okay. 
Um, one thing that Ayana says in the comments, she says, we, we have to know vulnerability is not a weakness. It's not a weakness. I agree, Ayana. It's not a weakness. The same way when we hear, ladies, when we hear the word submissive, oh, don't say the S word, child. <laughs> don't say the S word to some women because the word submission to a lot of women equates to weakness. It, uh, they feel it renders them powerless, that they don't have a voice. And when they hear the word submission, they automatically assume that it equates to weakness, submissiveness. That's a whole nother topic for another day that I'll probably talk about at some point. I'm not going to touch on it too much tonight, um, but just know being vulnerable, allowing yourself to be vulnerable, um, being submissive in the relationship um, is not a bad thing. Shahida says the concept of submissive, submissiveness is completely taken out of context. It is. Michelle says, ooh, you just cussed. I did. I still love the Lord, though. But yeah, you're probably going to hear a few cuss words tonight. Okay. Um, Ayana says, of course, be selective in who you allow in your space. But many women think being vulnerable is weak. It really is not, ladies. It's a part of your feminine energy, your feminine prowess. It's something that um, listen, you just can't give that vulnerability and that submissive to everybody. I've, I've had debates and I had, um, oh, <laughs> Nichelle said, no, you said, you said submissive, that, that word submissive. Nichelle knows that we've been in some heavy topics on that word submiss submissiveness. And that we've gone back and forth, um, even with some ladies who just feel that you're cussing at them when you say the S word. Um but listen, you cannot give that to everybody. Not every man is deserving of your vulnerability. You are not required to be submissive to every man that comes into your space. Your submissiveness is to your husband, if we want to get real about it, okay? If you're not married, though, you need to learn the truth about submissiveness. Um, and the order of marriage, the order of relationships, and know that, that it could do nothing but help your marriage, your relationship. Okay. Luana says, what about partnership? Marriage is a partnership. Or if you have partners, you have a partner. Um, it is about partnership. Relationships are about partnerships. Um and you have to view it as a partnership. Um, but submissiveness, vulnerability is not a cuss word, okay? You gotta learn to operate in it. It works, I'm telling you. I can remember, um, and this was even way before I got married, you know, um, I um, am a proponent of women fixing plates for men, okay? It's not something that my husband necessarily requires, particularly when we're at the house. It, it doesn't make him know, never mind if I fix his plate or not. Um, and it's just not something he necessarily requires. Um, but because he doesn't require that, what I have done is I made a habit of when I fix dinner and dinner's done, the person that probably gets their first plate, fixes their plate first more than likely is my husband because that is what I do to honor him as the head of the house, um, as the man of the house. So even if I don't fix it, I try to make a habit of allowing him to fix his plate first. Um, but I can remember having debates, and Michelle knows this, this well, debates that we have had men about women fixing a man's plate. Um, and how that very act alone, tapping into that kind of feminine energy can set you apart from other women, 
just the act of fixing his plate. Listen, some men, some women, child, listen, they ain't going for it. They ain't back. He can get his own damn plate. What's wrong with his arms? What's wrong with his legs? Let him get his own plate. Some women don't believe in that. I do. It's, it's cool for us in our household. Like I said, I can't tell you what to do. I can only tell you what I agree with and what works for me. We're talking about the art of femininity. If you are just checking in with us, we are talking about the art of femininity for Black women. Um, if this is your first time checking in, is this your first time checking into the conversation? Please let me know that you are in the comments. I would love to um, know that you are here in your presence. For the ladies, you can give me some lipsticks or some kissy faces because this is high heels and lipstick conversations. Um, for my brothers, if you are checking in, if I have said something you like, something you agree with, something you don't agree with, just give me a fist up in the chat. I would love for you to share your thoughts um, on this evening. We're halfway through some of these concepts. I'm only bringing you eight. Be emotionally vulnerable. That was four. Okay. Number five from Miss Candace is take care of your mental and physical health. Seek professional help for your mental if you need to. Listen, this, um, this particular concept from Candace is something that is um, very near and dear to me. I am very much a proponent of women being healthy, mind, body, and spirit. That's what my platform is all about. Okay. Being healthy, mind, body, and spirit. Um, listen, not all of us are going to be a size five. I ain't probably never been a size five in my life. Um, but can I tell you how much heart disease and stress um, and unhealthy eating habits, how much that is wreaking havoc on us as Black women. Heart disease, um, in particular, is known as the silent killer for Black women. And I'm going to try to pull up some statistics for you in, in case you think this is, in case you think what I'm saying is wrong. Um, but listen, there's some statistics I, I, I just want to share with you. Um, because if you are in my age group, um, you know that um, as you get a little bit older, <laughs> you start to feel things a little bit more often than not. Okay. Um, so let me just share some statistics with you. Um, as we talk about the, the, this one, um, it says cardi cardiovascular diseases kill nearly 50,000 African-American women annually. Of African-American women ages 20 and older, 49% have heart disease. Only one in five African-American women believe she is personally at risk. That means a lot of us are walking around with heart issues and we don't even know it because we don't think it pertains to us. We don't think that extra 30, 40, 50 pounds because so-and-so like it, black men like thick women, we don't think that it is doing us any harm. We are adamant about going to get our hair done, our nails done, um, but we frown upon getting out there and walking or going to the gym. But it says only 58% of African-American women are aware of the signs and symptoms of a heart attack. Only 36% of African-American African -American women know that heart disease is their greatest risk, health risk. Cardiovascular diseases kill nearly 50,000 African-American women annually. Oh, I'm sorry. I read that already. Anyway, those are st the statistics. That's what we need to know. Okay that we have to, Candace says, in the art of femininity, learning how to be feminine, that we got to take care of our mental and our physical health. Um, again, this does not mean that all of us are going to be a size five. 
I'm not. I ain't never been one. I'm not trying to be one. Um, but my health is very much important to me. And I think as Black women, we definitely need to take um, more of a concerted effort to, to be about our health. So Candace says, there are many contributing factors as to why Black women are leading in obesity. It's stress. It's the superwoman syndrome because we're taking on too much and we're not putting enough in our health. Our health is the number one reason we need to get fit. If we are not in good health and living at optimal levels, we simply cannot achieve generational excellence. To have a strong, to have strong families and love lives, we simply must be of sound mind and sound body. Get some exercise, ladies. Eat right. That's what Candace says. You want to be feminine? You want to learn the art of femininity? then get healthy, get healthy. Um, my cousin is, is, is checking in. I know that uh, pulled on his heartstrings and he put a, a, a black fist up there um, just that he agrees um, that black women should be about their health and, and their fitness. Um, but it's true. Heart disease is a silent killer for us. Um, listen, I'm mid 40s. I'm I'm 45, but I have a whole lot of life to live, um, and so um, I'm always going to be a proponent of of you know getting out, getting your exercise, eating right. That doesn't mean we're going to get it right all the time. No, but making concerted effort towards your health. This is the age where stuff starts giving out on us. And we don't want to die of young age, not having lived a full life um, because we refuse to 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 get our hair messed up because we went to the gym and sweated it out. Get you some braids. That's the reason why I wear braids. Get your protective style. Get out there and walk. Now, it doesn't have to you don't listen. You don't have to go to the gym and work out for two hours and um you know, become a bodybuilder. But if you just do a little bit of something that can help to prolong your life, okay? So mental health, um, that's another big one Candace talks about in the book. Um, there's so many concepts that she talks about, but she definitely talks about how um, mental health is important for us as Black women and um, this is more and more of a phenomenon for us as Black women. Um, I was watching a video broadcast. I cannot remember the young lady's name. I've mentioned her before, so I'm going to apologize. Um, but she was only 30 years old. She was Miss USA, um, and she ended up committing suicide by ju jumping off the bridge. That's just one example of some of the mental health issues that we as Black women are, are plagued with. When we are not, again, Candace says, when we are not living um, and, and feeling our best, we can't cater and nurture our families. We can't cater and nurture to our, our spouses. We can't serve and support others. Um, and so it's important to, to be about our health. Okay. I'm not going to belabor that long. Y'all know how I feel about that. Okay. Concept six. Candace, remember, if you are just checking in, I am sharing concepts from um, Candace Adwele, um, The Black Girl's Guide to Being Blissfully Feminine. Um, some of the reasons why I, I'm just sharing this is just because I've seen so much um, back and forth and bickering between Black men and Black women. Um, black men often feel like, feel as if we as Black women um, come off too masculine in our energy. Um, and if you were here with me in the beginning, um, you would know that I said that sometimes there's a reasoning for that. We've been conditioned that way. Okay, we've been conditioned as Black women to be strong. Um, we have been conditioned to take on a lot, to be superwoman. Um, we are fighting against um, whether we 
we want to admit it or not, you know, yes, black women are doing our thing. This is the, the year of the black woman. We're starting businesses. We're the most educated in the U.S. Um, we are entrepreneurs. We do it all. We see our images. We see Kamala Harris. We see, you know, uh, just all these black women that are doing things, political figures, entertainment. Um, and we're doing it big. This is the year of the black woman. That's what I would say. Um, but sometimes in that, we got to learn to take the cape off when it comes to relationships. We got to learn not to be the businesswoman in the home. We got to learn not to be the boss in our relationships. So that's what Candy is, Candace is talking about, the Black Girl's Guide to being blissfully feminine and how it can only help us in our relationships with men. It can help us in our relationships with Black men. Okay. Okay. So concept number six, that's where we are. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Listen, again, you're not going to agree with everything that I share, but Candace says that um, knowledge is power. Take some history classes, she says, take some reading and literature classes some financial classes, some art classes, some music lessons, some creative writing classes, and ladies, some cooking classes. <laughs> Learn how to cook something, okay? Candace says it's important, it's important to be a well-rounded lady. A feminine lady is no dummy. What do y'all think? Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Listen, I, I I have a story. You know, I can relate to some of these concepts. Um, I can remember again very early on in my um, younger years, my dating experiences before I got married, going out on a date with a young man, and um, one of the things that he asked me, and I, I'll never forget this, um, is, "What are you reading? What's on your um, bookshelf?" What books are you into? And listen, I couldn't, like, I was a college student at the time. So I was, uh, I think I was matriculating towards my, my bachelor's at that time. I know it wasn't before my math, uh, at the time that I was matriculating for my master's, but I couldn't tell him because I wasn't reading nothing. And then at some point I learned how important feeding your mind um, with knowledge not just in the knowledge that you get um, in the classroom or whatever, but just feeding your mind with good things, putting good stuff in your brain, how important that became for me um, and being in tune with my intellect. But I could not tell that guy what I was reading. What he was asking me is just to find out what commonalities that we have because he was well read. Um, I look back on that experience and think maybe I just wasn't ready for him at, at that time. Um, but according to Candace, we got to put some stuff in our head. A, a feminine, well rounded lady is no dummy. Y'all agree with that? Uh -huh. All I'm going to say is if only thing you can talk about on the day to day is what happened on Atlanta Housewives, uh, what they're doing on love and hip hop. Um, and I'm, I'm not against any of those things. OK, because I, I watch those as well. But if that's the the uh, extent of your conversation day in and day out. That's all I'm going to say. I ain't saying Candace said. Candace said, take some history classes, reading, literature classes, financial classes, art classes, music lessons, creative writing, a cooking class. <laughs> Get a cookbook. That's what, listen, she, she has, I'm not even going to touch on that concept again. Um, if you're just checking in, this is, I, I'm taking these concepts right out of this book. 
But listen, Candace has 42 concepts that she talks about. And one of them, she de dedicates a whole concept in chapter two, cooking. Listen, didn't Cardi B tell us she don't cook, she don't clean, but she still got the ring? That works for Cardi B. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work for me. If I didn't cook in my household, yeah, I think that works for Cardi B. Text and cooking class, ladies. That's what she says. I know. It sounds 1950. It sounds archaic. It's just her opinion. You like it or you love it. Okay. So, ooh, 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 ooh. This next concept. Let me see how y'all receive this one. She says, be a servant. Learn to be a servant. Um, that is another curse word right up there with submissiveness. Learning to be a servant. Right up there. But she says, be a servant. We were put on this earth to help and to build up one another, to make the world a better place to live. You should always have the heart of a servant not only to love and to serve your family, but to give give to those outside of your home. So be a servant. Listen, um, you know, there, there's so much that I can um, say about that, but all I'm going to tell you um, it is what I know to be true and what works for me. Everybody's situation is different. Everybody's relationship is different. Everybody has um, different needs. Um, but when I have observed long withstanding relationships, long withstanding marriages um, from couples that I really respected, from, from couples, elders who have been married 40, 50 years, one of the things that they will tell you is that you learn the art of serving one another. That's what marriage is all about, serving. But as women in particular, we were put on earth, according to Candace, this is her words. If you a believer in the Bible, you know it to be true because this is what God tells us, that we were put on this earth to be to help others, to be helpmates. Our call as women is to be a helpmate to our men. So listen, uh, I, I got some colleagues in podcasting who always refer back to Adam and Eve. And, and one, one thing that I always share is that um, Eve came along, Adam was there first, God gave him a purpose and he gave him a job. He gave him a purpose and he gave him a job. And this was before Eve ever came along. To help him fulfill that purpose, to help him um, in his job, he then gave him Eve to be his helpmate. Um, he didn't say that Eve, you know, um, was there to lead Adam in the purpose. And we can debate about her, you know, being tricked by Satan in the garden and all that. I'm not even going to go there. Y'all know the story. But, um, you know, our call as women is to be a helpmate, to serve and support. That does not mean that your husband um, should not serve and support you back. Um, but that's our special gift. That's our special quality as women to be servants. Okay. Shahida says, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Again, these are Candace's thoughts. I'm just telling you what I agree and don't agree with. Okay. The last concept. Um, or at least the last one that I, I, I'm going to touch on. Again, she has about 42 different concepts. I mean, she talks about everything um, in this book. And <laughs> it, 
and and being um, artfully, blissfully feminine and, and how that is necessary in our relationships with men and how men need that femininity from us. Um, but she talks, <laughs> she talks about being a freak in the sheets. She talks about um, being pretty, looking pretty and being the hostess with the mostest. And she talks about hygiene, feminine hygiene. And she talks about being girly and um, she talks about being nice to men. It's important to be nice to men. Um, but she also says, um, act like a lady, get treated like a queen. Okay. Act like a lady, get treated like a queen. And so one of the things that, uh, one of the comments that she makes, let me share um, in that regard is, we gotta learn to be soft, okay? And as we grow in our femininity, and as we come to understand the powerful influence of our femininity, it is vital that we grasp the way that we treat everyone around us, including men, matters. Okay. Including men. So how we treat folks um, around us. Can people come to us? Um, can your husband, can your mate come to you and you be a soft place to land? It's something to ask yourself. Are you a soft place to land? Can you be that peace? Are you a nurturer? That's part of our femininity. Um, one of the things that she makes a point of in this book is, um, you know, just not how that's that, that's that's necessary for men um, that they need that soft place, they need that nurturing spirit from us, but that tells a lot about us, how we treat other folks around us. Are we harsh to everybody that's around us? Or, or are we a soft place for others around us? Listen, this is not saying that you, you, you can't be strong, um, that you um, can't continue to be independent, that you have to um, be weak. It's not saying any of those things, but I, I think Candace is on to something. Especially when she says, be nice to men. Listen, I know what they did to you was wrong. <laughs> I know, you know, you've had some hard um, relationships. You've been hurt. You've been abused, but you survived it. Or you can also say, like I said too earlier, you pick them. So why let it turn you into something bitter where you're bitter against every man that crosses your path? That every man that crosses your path, you look for um, the red flags. Now, this is not saying be, be ignorant of the red flags. Um, but how do you treat the men around you? That says a lot about who you are and that matters. Mr. Miller says, all us men are not bad. <laughs> not all of them. Not all men are bad. That's right. I can testify. I can testify. Not all men are bad. Um, and we just have to get over our experiences um, and know that we can heal from our experiences. And not, and um, I always say this all the time, let your experiences make you better, not bitter. I know it's hard, okay? Um, but one of the things that, again, going back earlier, and, th and those are all the, the concepts I'm going to share, is that, um, you know, I, I've just been disheartened about the state, and, and this is going back to the study. I've just been hardened, 
disheartened about the state of Black men and Black women relationships and how much division I see and us not listening to each other and us accusing one another and um, us making each other the enemy. Okay. Yeah, this was for the ladies tonight. You know, some things to challenge us, to change us, to empower us, to make us think, to meditate on, um, to make us self-reflect and be accountable, to make us look in our in the mirror. That was for us. This was for us tonight. Um, but I've seen it in men as well. That for whatever reason, women, black women are the enemy for them. And it comes out in everything they say, in their behaviors, their disdain um, for women. And so um, it's something for us to think about individually, together, um, about our state with one another, our, our, our state of Black relationships. Is there something to us being feminine? Will that help us in relationships? Do men need that art of femininity, that feminine energy from us? Okay. Nichelle says, thank you for this discussion. Thank you for joining Nichelle. I appreciate your comments. I appreciate everyone that checked in on this evening. Um, one last comment that I'm going to share. Shahida says, I suggest that after a long relationship and you break up, take time for you to heal and grow and make better decisions the next time around. That's true. That's true. When you build on that hurt and accumulate that pain and you learn not to trust people and nobody got my back like I got my back, um, the energy you put out there is typically what you receive. So if you walk around and um, men Ooh, technical difficulties, technical difficulties. Sorry about that, y'all. Anywho, anyway, that's all I'm going to talk about on this evening. That that kind of wraps up. Technology made me know to, to, to wrap the conversation up. We've been going a little bit long here, but again, Nichelle says, thank you for the conversation. Thank you guys for adding to the conversation. Thank you for um, checking in. Again, I want to keep these conversations going. So for the month of June, if you if you stick with She is Namia, you share, um, share this with others, share this broadcast with others for the month of June. In the spirit of Juneteenth and Black folks and everything Black, when we celebrate, um, you know, Black music and, and Black, Black history and Juneteenth, um, I really want to put a focus on um, for the entire month of June focusing on Black relationships and um, Black love um, and the importance of us keeping our families together and, and, and keeping, um, you know, our, our families together. So um, continue to check in with me. Um, I'll share more about um, the month of June and our focus on relationships. I'm going to have my husband who was checking in on this evening to come and, and share. And we're going to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly of marriage. Um, um, just because I really want to see us do better. I, I want to see us um, get to a place where 
we are trusting one another, that we believe in one another, that we appreciate one another, and we no longer see each other as the enemy. Um, so again, thank you for the conversations. Continue to check in, share, like me on all of my social media. You see in the back, it says she is the mute. You can find me here on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Um, like me, follow me um, for more high heels and lipstick conversation, for more lipstick affirmations, um, for more topics of the week to make you think. Today we talked about um, what have you done to invest in yourself? And so I want to end with this, um, this lipstick affirmation, which I share um, pretty regularly on She Is Namia. So please like and follow. Um, but it's all about investing in yourself. And this is a past lipstick affirmation that I shared, and I'm going to end on this note. And thank you for in tuning in. But it says, invest in yourself. You're awesome at ensuring all the needs of others around you are met. You're faithful to your family and to those you love. You pour out all you have to ensure that others are able to live fruitful and fulfilling lives. But what have you done for yourself lately? Have you taken to the, the time to invest in yourself spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and even financially? A healthy and whole you is the best gift that you can give to your family, to your friends, and loved ones. It's the best gift you can give yourself. It's time to take off hold what you've always dreamed of accomplishing but never found time to do. So take that class, go get that degree if you can, um, that certificate, get started on that weight loss and healthy eating program, go secure that bag, go start that business, take that project off of hold, go book that trip. If you've always wanted to travel, start investing in yourself because you deserve it. And on that note, smooches y'all, thank y'all for checking in. I appreciate you more than you realize. Have a good and blessed week. What's up, y'all?